I'm Robin Amlo of IBS Intelligence. You're listening to the IBSI Views podcast. With me is Fanny Tangirala, Senior Director for Explio Solutions. And our topic for today is hyper automation. What's the big thing about hyper automation? Why is this going to change the industry? Let's see how the industry has been moving uh, in the last several years. There has been one thing which is common across industries and more so specifically in banking and financial services is a rush to release things into the market because the traditional brick and mortar banks are constantly challenged by the fintech companies. So there is a big race and the race is to reach customer as fast as you can. So if you see traditionally what has been done manually has been replaced with software. So that is a kind of an automation in a way, but that's not good enough because we have been in this last two decades or three decades, so many things which are otherwise done manually have been already automated. So that is uh, given. So now the next phase is how do we progress it even further? So if you see the life cycle, those good old days, you get the requirements, the requirements are broken into technical specifications. Somebody does the coding, somebody does the quality assurance, you release it into the production. Only then it is consumed by the end, a bank or the, any other financial institution. This whole process of automating what is otherwise done manually itself is taking too long enough for anyone's comfort. So that's where everything has to be automated. So it is not just automating what is done functionally into uh, manually into an uh, automated fashion. It is also the process of automating whatever has to be automated. So it, in a way, it is an automation of automation. So uh, uh, right from the beginning, your business processes and uh, right from your rules, your uh, IT processes, everything which is done manually in order to do a normal automation also has to be automated. So that's fundamentally the difference. And the race for this is certainly towards securing a faster time to market, which was the essence problem at this point of time. So from our point of view, this is exactly what the industry is going towards, and they are keen to see who and how this can be helped. The primary objective of hyper automation is to create a framework, and the framework is a group of tools, technologies that enable automation of automation in very simplistic terms. Of course, I mean, you do have further things on what kind of technologies that are uh, used. You use artificial intelligence, machine learning, then robotic process automation, business process management, low-code, no-code tools, and so IPaaS, which is integration platform as a service. All these are individually available and individually used in many places. But this is hyper-automation talks about one particular framework, which brings all these things into one. And that is why there is no single solution as a hyper-automation It's a group of solutions and it has to be very well integrated. So it is like putting all the jigsaws together so that as much as possible, you minimize the human intervention and take the whole thing into an automated fashion. And on top of it, it is not just being automated. The important factor in the last two years that has been coming up is when you do a business process mining, you understand the patterns. That's where the machine learning and artificial intelligence also comes into picture. And then it suggest back the best possible way of doing it. So it comes with a kind of training to the system and getting the feeds from there. And as much of business process mining data you supply to it, the faster you can become successful in automation or the hyper automation. The key thing I would say from what you've just been telling me is that we have to assure the quality of the work. We have to make sure we get the the QA, the QE right, because if you don't get the quality right, if, if what you're offering is not correct, you're not going to be able to achieve the end goal. Absolutely. So that is a, a slightly a different dimension to it. Uh, what I've explained in the previous bit is what exactly is hyperautomation and why the industry is going towards hyperautomation. But when you play around, when you connect so many technologies together, one mistake at one place can bring down the whole thing. And these are highly sensitive to costs. Putting all these things together in the long term really gives you a return of investment, but the initial investment could be very high. So we have very little scope for any error here, Robin. And the chances of failure are very high if you are not taking care of the quality part of it first. 
that's where the, uh, i would rather put two major things into the picture on the hyper automation for it to be successful is one is an extensive domain knowledge and number two is you should have that predictability on where things fail that means your quality assurance and quality engineering i may want to go a little bit deeper the quality assurance i'll try not to use this here because those are the good old days in the waterfall where you throw things over the wall and someone picks up and tests is not the case anymore especially in hyper automation you have to engineer your entire development process be it hyper automation or whatever right from the beginning with the quality at the center of the stage so it is a quality based engineering and that's why the quality engineering takes precedence over anything why i also added domain is because these are highly business process driven when you do an automation of business processes and it processes it processes could be very much standard across uh, industries i mean the way you run your batches or you take the backups or whatever but business processes will significantly change from industry to industry from a, a banking a retail banking to a commercial banking or an islamic banking or uh, you go into any of the insurance the processes are very much specific to that particular vertical so a very good understanding of domain is extremely big prerequisite for me compared to anything else so the quality mindset and the business these are the two major pillars of it and the third is of course technology so these three will stand as the tripod to have a stable thing and ensures the benefits of uh, hyper automation so you are perfectly right when you said quality is important at this at the end of the day we are spending good money over this so we have to see it first time right right quality has got to be at the heart of this how does hyper automation help me as a business manager for example deliver more quickly because i i would assume that we're talking about something that speeds up all the processes absolutely so let us take an example of a bank robin right from the customer onboarding towards uh, creating his accounts and issuing him loans or managing his assets wealth management there are so many of these processes right and all these things take the customer onboarding itself is a very very long process when it comes to taking the data and putting that into the system and the data at times come through scan documents or through someone punching in the data so these are all the things which consume bulk of the time if you see any of the operations uh, in a bank a bulk of the people are mostly punching the data either from scan documents or from any other sources so by doing a hyper automation you are eliminating that particular uh, manual inter- beat your uh, id cards to an application forms or hand scribbled documents everything becomes a proper source where if i ro- use uh, some of the robotic process automation which is also a part of the hyper automation they take things and then convert into the data that is part one so capturing the data from various sources and putting them and thereby cutting a good amount of operations team is one part of it then comes the workflow management that's really a very crux of uh, the whole thing because the workflow and the workload management is one of the key with, which determines how many people you need to have to do this kind of a work when that is not thought through then you have spikes of business uh, booms where you have a larger number of team and then for the rest of the year you don't know what to do thereby you invest on something or you get into contract all those things can be eliminated when you have the entire process also is out and how do i simulate this and now the advantage of the today's technology and uh, is you uh, there is something called a, a digital twin i'm sure most of uh, you have uh, must be aware of that a digital twin helps you to replicate in the digital world an entire bank operations right from onboarding to the final settlement once that happens you are almost simulating if i get a million accounts to be created in a year what will be the workload you can actually create it you can foresee even you even you start creating a system where will be the load which application goes under the biggest stress these are all the things which are happening today in real time you develop an application put it in the production and then when the end of the financial year comes where the business booms then the system cripples and you are already reactive you are going into a reactive mode but with the hyper automation techniques these are all can be simulated much before using digital twin techniques and then through robotic uh, process automation and uh, workload management tools which are also part of it they can be distributed accordingly and automated so where it benefits at the end of your implementation is you not only save costs 
but you add value to it and you also reduce your time to market. The entire time which takes can be cut down by a significant amount and more importantly, without human errors. So the entire thing is going to be a beneficial as a bank or an insurance company where today a good amount of money and time is spent on human interven intervened processes which are prone for mistakes. Well, let's take one particular example of that, and that's the use of low-code platforms. Because I'm not a technical expert, but with a low-code platform, I can bring a product to market without having to involve technical teams, which is going to speed my time to market. How, how do you see that disrupting the banking industry? So let us understand. I mean, uh, very frankly, I would rather call, call them as a low-code than no-code. No-code is a little far-stretched at this point of time. I mean, you still require some element, but if not uh, as much you are, as you require for a uh, kind of a development which you are using as a, a Java, C, C++, which is not the case. So how are these platforms uh, created? They have thought through. And if you see the industry also is slightly aligning towards vertical. There are low-code platforms which are ideally suitable for insurance kind of an organizations. There are low-code platforms which are more suitable for banking because they have gone through, understood the domain and created those components which you don't have to develop and they have thought through and put it for you so that you just make use of those things. So the entire life cycle of developing an application, taking care of the requirements, taking care of the reusability of the objects, taking care of the IT security, vulnerable threats, all these things add too much of overhead when you start developing things on your own. But when you go through a proven low-code platform, all these are thought through and these components are adequately tested for those things that you don't have to do. When you adopt a uh, drag and drop one particular component for your business use, use some connectors to connect to your main applications, then you are at least rest assured that the other headaches on the performance or the cyber uh, attacks and other things are already taken care. Thereby, the entire life cycle just shrinks into very little. And the dependency on technical know-how and the knowledge is also cut down because today you, you see any of the bank, some of the banks are bigger, their IT departments are bigger than some of the IT companies. And that is all because you, over a period of time, accumulate so many desperate uh, systems, right from mainframes to Java to C, C++, .NET, C Sharp, so many technologies. So you end up having so many technologies that maintenance of it requires those skills and which are not easy to get in the market anywhere. And in today's world, that has become even more difficult. So you are avoiding all these things by adopting something which has already been thought through and you are customizing it without technical knowledge. I would say not without, with as little technical knowledge as possible. Well, the important thing from the, the banking business's point of view is that it is a bank. It's not a technology business, although from the description you've just given of all the various <laughs> different softwares that they have to maintain, a lot of effort is going into just keeping the wagon on the road rather than doing the business, creating the new products, building the market share, creating the customer experience, creating the customer loyalty, gaining more customers. That's kind of what the business should be doing, not just trying to keep things going. Absolutely. It is like putting the cart in front of the house. My core competency is banking and let me be busy doing things related to banking. Same goes with an insurance. But what often happens is I have a plan and I have to execute and my dependency on IT is so very high that the IT dictates when you can launch the product, not when the market needs it, right? So the things have totally reversed. That's why the need for things like this, hyper automation, which involves uh, low code, no code, and uh, robotic process automation, business process automation, IPaaS, are more required now than any time in the past, uh, Robin. Thank you very much, Fanny Tangirala, Senior Director, Delivery Solutions. <laughs>